Hi, and welcome to this walkthrough of an unstructured titration question, which includes a slightly stickier scaling factor. OK, so let's have a look at the question. Um, and the first thing to look at is how to visualize the process. That means you have to read the bullet points at the top to have a think about what's actually going on. The student prepares a 250 centimeter cube solution from 1.513 grams of A. So you imagine that you've got a solid 1.513 uh, grams of A, and that's dissolved in deionized water. The exact amount of water isn't important because then that is transferred into a polymetric flask and made up to the mark with deionized water again. So then it says the solution of A is added to the burette, like that, and it's titrated with 25 centimeter cube volumes of 0.112 mole per decimeter cubed NaOH. And that's what's in the conical flask at the bottom. And then it says that the student obtains a mean titer of 27.30 centimetres cubed. So what you've got to remember is the moles of A that are required is only a proportion of the original sample. Because you're not going to use the whole burette and bowl up, you're going to use a small amount of it. So if we now think about how to do the calculation part, you use the data moles equation moles answer technique. And the first thing is to look at what you have enough information for to work out the moles. And that happens to be sodium hydroxide. So the volume is 25 centimeters cubed and the concentration is 0.112 moles per decimeter cubed. So using n equals c times v, you can work that out, making sure that you convert 25 centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed by dividing by a thousand. And that gives you 2.8 times 10 to the minus three moles. Now it says one mole of A reacts with two moles of NaOH. This means we don't need an equation to work out the mole ratio because the sentence actually tells us what it is. So therefore the number of moles of A is going to be half the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So that's easy enough. You just divide 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3 by 2 and that gives you 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. So the student obtains a mean titer of 27.30. So that means there's a scaling factor involved. So you take your moles of A and you multiply that by the scaling factor, that's how many times 27.30 goes into 250. And that gives us a calculator value. So what you do is you put the calculator value into the calculator memory, and the question tells you to work out the molar mass of A. So remembering the conversion for molar mass, moles and mass, the molar mass is going to be the mass over the moles. So that's going to be 1.513 over your calculator value that you can now recall from the calculator memory. And that gives you 118.014. But it tells you to give the answer to the nearest whole number. So you just take off the 0 .1, uh, 0 0.014 and round down to 118. And that's your final answer. Second part of the question it asks you to suggest a structure for A. It says it's got two COOH groups, so essentially you need to work out what goes between them. So the information you have enables you to work out that one COOH group, or carboxylic acid group, is 45.0 grams per mole. Obviously two of those are going to be 90 grams per mole. So therefore, we know that our total um, molar mass for our compound is 118. Subtract the two COOH groups from that, and that gives you 28 which allows you to put in something along the lines of CH2 twice. That's not the only possible option, because you could also have a methyl group coming off in a slightly shorter, longest carbon chain. So either of those two would be acceptable in this case, because it asks you to suggest the structure, not give the structure. So that means that there's more than one option that is available. OK, hopefully this has been of some use in having a think about questions like this. Until next time, thanks for listening, and see you soon.